Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name's Benson. What's yours? Real quick, just a beginning cap to this video. Um, there was a store that opened, did their grand opening this weekend called 511. Uh, you might refer to them as 511 Tactical. Uh, originally, it started out as a store who only sold to um, paramedics, police, uh, firefighters, and veterans, and uh, soldiers. They make really high quality gear, backpacks, gun cases, um, tools, clothes, like they've got, they're really good about their like, the, the lifetime of their clothes and their stuff. Um, anyways, they are now opening stores to the public where you can go in and buy some of the gear and they did their grand opening. First 70 people got a gift card. Um, in fact, with this one, the uh, first Three people got a $511 gift card. The next 10 people got $100 gift cards, and everybody after that up to 70 got a $10 or a $50 gift card. So Kristen and I went and did the grand opening for it. Um, the people that were the top three in line have been there since 5 p.m. the day before. And so, I mean, there are a lot of dedicated people who know this product. They support this company because this company supports our soldiers, our firefighters, our paramedics, our police officers, and everything. So this is basically us at that. I forgot to do an intro for it and I wanted to let you know what was going on there. Um, also, when they do the ceremony, they do it in front of the line. So the line snakes from the front of the store and then back around the Mission Barbecue truck and you'll see that in the video too. Uh, they had a bunch of vendors there that we saw. The next two videos will be, one will be the stuff I got from the show or from the opening and then there's another one for one of the vendors that was there that I really kind of loved their message. So the next two videos are gonna be specifically about this little grand opening event slash some of the vendors that were there but I'm in a really bad spot. I, I kind of wish they had pulled the line back away from the wit away from the store so that we got like a front view, but it's not a big deal. We still got to hear everything. Everybody was energetic and we enjoyed it. Just want you to know that this grand opening specifically honors the brave men and women who are in the military, the police, the firefighters, the paramedics. And so they do some honoring as their grand opening. So that's awesome. They get with the police chief and, you know, they really kind of bring in the firefighters and the military and stuff for these grand openings. So just kind of giving you a little heads up of what this video is about because I forgot to do an intro and tell you what we were doing. So hope you enjoy it. to all of us at 511 that come out to represent this great brand that you would come out and support this company and this company stands for serving those that serve these fine women and gentlemen right here in front of us our military we are so honored to build product for these first responders and those that serve us so it's a pleasure to be out here today by coming out you're showing your support to these heroes so thank you so much for that
I want to thank the great partners that came out today, Mission 22, K9s for Warriors, Black Hive CrossFit, Life Flight, KRM Tactical, who drove all the way up from West Palm Beach, uh, Adanek Harley-Davidson, 1010XL, our U.S. Navy, thank you so much, U.S. Navy. And Mission Barbecue that does such a great job supporting our military. Thank you so much, Mission Barbecue. Uh, I want to acknowledge some very important people that make this happen, and that's the 511 family. I want to acknowledge Sean Bernie. If you can raise your hand, Sean, there we go. Sean is our district manager here in the Southeast United States. Thank you for all your efforts, Sean. Our store manager, Christian Magalanes. Christian, thank you so much. Christian moved up from West Palm Beach to open the store and done an incredible job building his staff with Tyler, Matthew, and Lori. If you can raise your hands. Thank you so much. Joining them as well from Atlanta, Justin, from Tampa, Tina, and from Charlotte, our great man, Shane Thorpe. You guys raise your hands. Manager coming out to visit and support the opening here in Jacksonville. I have a very important person that joined our company just seven months ago with an incredible track record leading marketing for major organizations around the globe. Joining us as our Vice President of Marketing, Ms. Jennifer Glover. Thank you, Jennifer. And to kick off our celebration today, ladies and gentlemen, the most colored member of the 511 family. He started off as the first ever model when we had a single page fall out. He's an army veteran. He was a 27 year veteran of the Anaheim Police Department where he ended up leading the SWAT team and the anti-terrorism groups there out in California. He's a decorated Patriot American. He's our director of marketing, Mr. Christopher Schneider. Hey, store number 48, here we are. Hey, welcome everybody. We have a, a, bit, a very court, a short ceremony that we like to do uh, to recognize a couple individuals. We have a couple of special guests we want to move, uh, introduce you to, and then we're going to introduce you to a great shopping experience. So, uh, first things first, uh, we start out the way we do, being uh, proud to be Americans here. We're going to start with the National Anthem. Folks, you're going to have to park the Red Sea right there because we have an amazing color guard coming through here. So, you're going to see them. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call our guard to post. Gentlemen, please remove your covers. Ladies and gentlemen, we have from uh, right here, Jacksonville, St. John's Explore Post presenting the colors. Ladies and gentlemen from Jacksonville Sheriff's Department, we're very honored to single that for singing national anthem is Lieutenant Chris Brown. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hid at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night, all the ramparts we walked were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, they gave proof. Through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spell banner get away? Oh, land of the free and the home of the brave. That was a very good round. Let's do that. 
Get up and head, I'll give you time, right? Yeah, he's a good looking dude too, huh? So I'll uh, carry that tradition. Uh, we're gonna continue this out. Just by show of hands, how many people here uh, law enforcement or prior law enforcement? All right, we got some in the back over there. How about uh, fire? EMS. Now let's get to the other side of the coin here. Military. How many folks like me in the Army? Four? All right, awesome. How many Air Force? Come on, we gotta have some. Oh, there we go. We got some Air Force over here. Uh, how about Marines? All right. So, don't, folks, don't worry. I'm gonna speak really slowly and clearly so you Marines can understand everything I'm saying. Don't worry about that. Four? How about Navy? I know we got a lot of Navy folks out there. That's here for the Navy. And how about you, Coasties? How many Coast Guard out here? Don't be shy. Army still loves you. Uh, we got Coast Guard out here. So listen, uh, we were uh, very honored to be a, a, a proud sponsor of the National Law Enforcement Memorial. Unfortunately, last May, we put 144 names on that wall. And it's a sad thing to, to have to report. Uh, and they're at the monument in Washington, D.C. And we don't never forget those folks. And in tribute to all those uh, service members around the world, and the police officers, EMS, and firefighters have lost their lives in line of duty. We always pay a salute at our grand openings, and today's no exception. Uh, we are going to play the traditional song of Amazing Grace, and we're very honored to have Officer Chris McEwen play the pipes. <laughs> God bless your souls. Let's give a hand. Chris McKinley, Officer Chris McKinley. Didn't color guard a hand. St. John's Explorer. I show of hands. Who knows what 511 means? Just give me a show of hands. Do you know, anybody know what 511? People think it's a, there's a few in the back. People think it's a radio code or a police code. It's not. 511 is actually a climbing term in Yosemite Valley. The level of difficulty on a climb in Yosemite Valley is based on Yosemite decimal system. 5.0, 5.0 being the easiest climb, 5.1, 5.2, the harder it goes up. Back when we had our first pair of pants, they were named the 511 pant because the most difficult climb in Seventy Valley at the time was a 5.10. We named the company the pant the 511 pant because it's the impossible, only few could ever achieve it. And that's where it came. So we started as a pants company in Yosemite Valley and started doing pants and shirts. And now we're doing backpacks, knives, watches, boots, and a wide spectrum. Our core customer is many of those folks that you saw raise their hand. We were only selling to police, fire, military, and EMS exclusively. Most of you folks could buy our stuff. And as time went on and the popularity grew up, uh, we started getting into the big boxes. Now we're in big boxes like Bass Pro, Cabela's Sportsman's Academy, Dick's Sporting Goodfield Street, and many other, and many thousands of uh, 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 dealers around the, uh, around the world. We're in 80 countries right now. So we grew, and then uh, Jeff, who you met, our senior vice president of retail, who's a remarkable, loving, uh, and a great leader, uh, came up with the idea, started doing all the retail boxes. So this is store uh, grand opening number 48. 
if you really like what you see out here, you could come see me in Pittsburgh next Saturday because we're doing the same thing all over. And then we have uh, Fort Bliss, our first uh, one coming up on Army Post on, on Fort Bliss will be in two weeks. And then the following week in Tucson and then Bakersfield, California, we're averaging a store about uh, one every other week. So we're really growing. And the reason we're growing is because of the 501 family. Jeff introduced you to some of the 501 family and the fact that you folks all stood in line. Some of these folks have been out here since 5 o'clock yesterday, and that's not unusual. We had a grand old people come out on Tuesday and spend four nights out here. 17 degrees in Chicago, three stores. 17 degrees in the snow, Virginia Beach, buckets of rain. The people are out there. So what I'm here to tell you is that we are, we're a 501 family. You folks are also a 501 family because you're the one that makes the store successful. Everything you see in our catalog, on the, on the videos, in the store, is all designed and created by end users, much like these subject matter experts you see in front of you. So give yourselves a hand because you are now a part of the 501 family. When we go into a new market and open a store, we reach out to that local jurisdiction, either the police and the fire, and we ask them to nominate somebody for either valor, life-saving, career achievement, or community service. And today was no exception. Reach out to the chief over here at Jackson, uh, Jacksonville uh, Sheriff's Department, and they selected a couple individuals. And uh, we're going to bring those folks up and briefly recognize them. At this time, I'd like uh, Chief uh, Matthew Nemeth to come up and uh, tell them why he nominated these individuals. Hey, real quick, I want to interject here. Um, so the stories that are about to be told is about three officers uh, specifically who were injured in the line of duty. Uh, he does go into detail of what happened to them, how they were wounded. Um, I will tell you it's very moving. I almost cried uh, listening to it, you know, some of the trauma that they went through. Um, so if stories like that upset you, you might want to fast forward you know, a few minutes or so. Because, uh, like I said, some of the stories, like these guys, uh, Gajones of Steel. Um, and I, I just want to give you that heads up before you get into that, like in case stuff like that bothers you, or, you know, I know people out there suffer from different traumatic situations, and hearing other people's traumatic situations can cause them to have flashbacks and stuff. So I just want to give that warning. Um, so, but anyways, without further ado, here are the three officers that were nominated. Uh, and like I said, these gentlemen are absolutely amazing. Chief? Thank you, Chris. Good morning, everybody. Morning, morning, morning. For 32 years, every single time I heard bagpipes play, it meant that we lost another officer. But when I heard it today, it reminded me that we had three officers standing over here that they could have easily been added to that wall because of acts of heroism that they took. I'm going to share with you the first story of two. Officer Jeremy Mason. In July of 2017, while Jeremy and his police service dog Echo were patrolling the streets of Jacksonville, <coughs> Jeremy obtained information pertaining to the possible location of a suspect who was wanted for armed robbery at two area banks. This suspect had an extensive arrest record and had no regard for the lives of others. This was evident by his actions during the robberies as well as during a shootout with a suspected drug dealer earlier that day. Jeremy responded to an area in which the suspect had reportedly been spotted. Shortly after arriving, Jeremy observed the suspect in a vehicle being driven by another person and began following the suspect vehicle. As he activated his emergency lights and sirens, the vehicle accelerated and a pursuit ensued. Jeremy attempted to conduct a pit maneuver in an effort to immobilize the vehicle. However, at the same time, the suspect began shooting a handgun out of the passenger side window, striking Officer Mason's vehicle several times. Undeterred and determined to stop the suspect's crime spree, Jeremy continued to pursue the vehicle. The suspect continued shooting at Jeremy from the fleeing vehicle, eventually shooting Officer Mason in the face. After being shot and in an effort to stop the threat, Jeremy returned fire while still inside his police vehicle. The suspect vehicle eventually crashed and was immobilized. Despite being shot in the face, Jeremy quickly exited his vehicle to take the suspect into custody. Meanwhile, another officer responded to the scene to help Jeremy. Unfortunately, the suspect didn't comply with the officer's orders and pointed his gun at the officers who returned fire and killed the suspect. But this isn't the end of the story. Officer Mason suffered through 12 surgeries for more than a year before he was able to return to work. As soon as he was able, Jeremy began running and lifting weights to get back into shape, a canine officer needs to be in order to perform his rigorous duties. 
He also completed the Instructor Technique School and is currently working on his FDLE and National Police Canine Association certifications to become a recognized canine trainer. Finally, Jeremy is recognized in Washington, D.C. this past year at the National Police Memorial event. Please join me in recognizing Officer Jeremy Mason's heroic actions to protect our community. Folks, let me read what we have here. Uh, July 13, 2019, with great appreciation, Bible of Attack was proud to recognize canine officer Jerry Mason, uh, badge number 64, uh, I'm sorry, 63423 at a Jacksonville Sheriff's Office for his outstanding and exemplary service to the community, acknowledges the risk and commitment to complete the mission. Always be ready. Let's give him a hand, folks. The second incident involves officers Mike Fox and Kevin Gerald. Come on over, guys. On August 18, 2017, police officer Kevin Gerald and police officer Mike Fox were answering a 911 call about three women and children who were hiding from a man firing a gun inside of a home. Officers Fox and Gerald attempted to apprehend this active shooter in order to protect the victims, but the suspect immediately began shooting at the officers with a rifle from just inside the house. A gun battle began within a few feet of each other and the officers killed the man who was shooting at them. But before it was over, the suspect shot both officers. Officer Gerald was shot and received life-threatening injuries to his stomach. In the months following this critical incident, Officer Gerald recovered from surgery and also began lifting weights and running to regain his strength. He completed the General Instructor's Technique School as well as a Firearm Instructor's School. He returned to his patrol zone but was soon transferred to the Citywide Task Force where he continued to excel. Not long after that, Officer Gerald tried out for the K-9 unit and was accepted into this demanding unit. Officer Gerald is currently in K-9 school working with a very high drive German Shepherd named Mansoor and continuing his service to our community. Officer Fox was shot in both hands, causing extensive bone and nerve damage. Officer Fox lost a finger from the attack. He was placed on paid administrative leave as he recovered from the gunshot wounds to his hand, which required physical therapy three times a week to remove bullet shrapnel from his hand. In the weeks and months following the deadly shooting, Officer Fox had to learn to reuse his hand with a missing index finger. Officer Fox requested and was assigned to the JSO firing range where he completed the firearms instructor's course, and today he's a firearms instructor. Officer Fox returned to full duty in March of 2018 where he continues to carry out his duties and responsibilities in a most professional manner. Please join me in. Thank you. Much. Hang tight here because we got something special for you to do, folks. On a serious note, that uh, we talked about this as we uh, remember them with the bagpipes, but many of these officers, these folks in uniforms and the fire departments out here in the military, they risk their life every day so you can enjoy your Saturdays like this. Many times they, they uh, miss their kids' Christmases and their Christmas mornings, they miss their kids' softball games and their soccer games, and that goes for every first responder. They put their life out there every single day. That's our core customer, and that's what brought us to the table. I'd like to give them one more round of applause. Yeah. So he's the, he's the big shot down here in Jacksonville. He runs the whole city. But let's standing next to him, Assistant Chief for Steve, who is uh, running the uh, South Zone. Is that what's called? The Zone? South Side Zone. So the neighborhood you're in right here, you're feeling pretty safe with both of these guys and his crew out here. So let's give it a we are not that bad to be on. We're sure not build a bear. We don't cut ribbons. We breach doors. Huh? So today's no different. And we're going to have the chief come up here. And with your assistance, the chief's going to pick up that ram. We're going to count down. And we're going to count down. Five, four, three, two, one. Breach. I'm the commander breach. Hopefully. The chief is going to breach this door, huh? If he does, we got the assistant chief to jump in here. And he's got the video camera going, so no pressure. I'm ready. Five. Come on. Four. Three. Two. One. Breach. Woo! There we go. 
out. Folks, the score is up. Listen, we're going to put some markers down here. And they're going to be gold and silver. We want you to sign this side of the door. Because at the end of the day, we're going to take that off the hinges and hang it up in the in the office, in the uh, store. So make sure you sign the door before you leave. Everything in the store is 20% off all day today and tomorrow. Up until 8 p.m. tonight. If you're friends with us. So I'm a terrible vlogger. I didn't show you the food we ate, um, but it's Mission Barbecue. So I'm gonna show you what's left of Kristen's plate. So some so some jalapeno cheddar sausage, cornbread, and mac and cheese. Uh, I had brisket. The brisket was excellent, like melt in your mouth, delicious. Mission Barbecue. If you ever in Jacksonville, the St. John's Town Center, they're a really good place. Uh, and they actually passed out free sandwiches from them, and you can upgrade that free sandwich for five dollars. Get a drink and a side. So. They're really close to where I work. I love it. So, anyways, Mission Barbecue. You ever have a chance to eat them? So the crowds have died down a good bit. There's still some people inside shopping. Uh, we're hanging out till two o'clock for all the raffles. Uh, see if we can't win something. I mean, we got some pretty good stuff already for free. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we can get. But we did have somebody who we met in line this morning give us some of their tickets too. So. Maybe we'll win some cool stuff. There's the pretty lady, the other pretty lady, and the other pretty lady. All three of my ladies are here. Yeah, there's three of you here. <laughs> Very tired. 